they're ready, folks. Uh, they're ready. How's it going, folks? So we're aboard the Arctic Corsair. This is the last of the deep water sidewinding, side fishing trawlers left. It was acquired by Hull City Council at the back end of the 1980s, as far as I remember. And they have tried their damnedest on a limited budget to preserve it. And I think it's working. We, uh, as you can see, it's exactly the same as any other sidewinding motor ship, motor ships. It's built exactly the same. Main engine, winch engine, generators, and the ancillary bits and bobs that make it run. I mean, these ships were the ultimate in luxury when they were built. Cabins on the port side all closed in. I mean, before that, they all slept in the forecastle, didn't they? With a coal fire. My cabin was just outside the engine room door, which is here. I came straight out of my cabin, slid down this ladder, nothing to bang your head on, down this one, and I was in the engine room. <laughs> Main engine, six cylinders, each one individual. The gauges we can see up here are the exhaust temperature gauges, the temperature of the exhaust gas coming from the engine. And you set all them so they were all running equal via the fuel pumps on the other side so that each engine was given the same amount of power. Individual engines, the six, one, two, six, one. Inlet valves, exhaust valves, so as your car. Injector in the middle. Air start valve down the side. You started with compressed air, turned it over, as soon as she was moving, injectors came into force. Independent fuel pump on each one, so you could adjust the amount of fuel that was going into each engine, so you could tell what temperature was coming out. The gauges on the top had a fresh water temperature coming out of each head. And providing everything was running normal, each engine was creating the same amount of horsepower. These are the orders that come in from the bridge. He wants to go half a stern. So you'd answer that and you would put it, you put a half a stern. And then stand by, he knew we were here. So we'll wait and see what he's going to do next. And you'd think he's just finished and then it would go pull ahead. Obviously he was catching no fish and he's moving. <laughs> the colour coding on here, yellow is lubricating oil. Brown is fuel oil. Blue is fresh water, green is salt water, black is bilge, white is air. A lot of ships had just painted them all white, everything was painted white. It served them messing about with different colours. But I was always renowned as a paintbrush engineer. My chief used to say, when are you going to wallpaper the switchboard? <laughs> Everybody think it must have been stinking hot and it wasn't. The ventilators that came in to feed the turbochargers on the end of the engine were cold across from the deck. The engine drew most of the hot air out of here and sucked it out and blew it up the chimney. The accommodation door was very rarely shut. Most people like that open because it drew air into the engine room. It ventilated accommodation, so they had draft going through the accommodation and in here, so it wasn't hot. I suppose in this modern day and age, you'd have to have air defenders and a space suit to work down here. But we had a t-shirt and dungarees and a flat hat. Right, as you can see, we're now out on the deck. This is the troll winch. When it stopped, because it stopped, as you open it up, so the resistance kick out until you get no resistance on the electric motor, and then it's on full power. Slow it down, resistance comes back in until you're on stop. This on the drum here is just rope, just as a demonstrator to show you how it fitted on. This is not a warp for towing fishing nets down. The one on the side is 
40 ton normally loading. Yeah, we were uh, well paid for the time, you know, for, compared with shore workers. Well, I think when I left Humber St Andrews, my wages were about 18, 18 and 19 pound a week. And I came aboard here, and my wages at that time were about 36, 37. Plus, it was a good ship that was on a good earning ship. And my poundage, what I got out of the catch making money, varied from about 90 to 120, 130 quid. That was for 24 days. If you had anything about you at all, you could sit for your skipper's ticket. In and about 10 or 12 years, you could have, from leaving school to being 24 or 25 years old, you could be a skipper of one of these. Most of the skippers stayed there from leaving school to working their way through here. To... Then it all collapsed and the world just chucked on the scrap heap. What did they do? I don't know, they were all casual. And so the men just, where did they go? No fish I was just left because there was no fish coming in. There was no maintenance required because there were no ships to look after. And where did they all go? If things go according to plan, it's going to be dry docked and had a full refit and it's going to be reopened to the public in the estimated two years time in its new home, in its new dry dock fully painted up, polished. So the maintenance crew, which I am, we can come round down with a feather duster and just, <laughs> just dust it and polish the brass and instead of having to uh, try and keep the old girl together, it's going to be done professionally and properly and in its new birth. And it should last another 50 years. <laughs>